Hey guys, welcome back to the series of videos on static timing analysis concepts. In this video, we will try to understand the difference between the static timing analysis and the dynamic timing analysis, also called as timing simulation. So the first difference is that the static timing analysis does not take any input stimulus. For cell delay, it takes the data from characterized lookup tables, which are present in the .lib file, which are .liberty files, which come from the vendor, whoever we are buying the standard cell library from. And for the wire delays, it either estimates the delays or takes the delay from the RC extraction. But the timing simulation takes the input stimulus. We need to give the stimulus to the timing simulation and we need to validate the output, whether this is expected output or not. And the second difference is that the static timing analysis, unfortunately, cannot validate the functionality of the design. So it can only deal with the timing analysis, but cannot validate the functionality of the design. But the dynamic timing analysis validates the functionality as well. So that is the reason why we have functional verification as a different step in IC design flow since static timing analysis cannot cover the functionality. And the third difference is static timing analysis is actually much faster for complex design compared to the dynamic timing analysis since it's like if we have 10 million gates we have to validate all of them by giving input stimulus let's say the inputs are 100 or 1000 now we need 2 to the power 1000 combinations of inputs which need to be given to cover them fully but here it's not the case because we don't provide any inputs it's just the calculation that has to happen it happens pretty quickly so static timing analysis is much better for uh, complex designs and it's much faster dynamic timing analysis or timing simulation is much slower also the static timing analysis is a complete and exhaustive process that is because it can handle the timing analysis without being given any input stimulus and it will cover all the timing paths in the entire digital design but the dynamic timing analysis coverage whether it's complete or not depends on the test vector which is given if we provide all the test vectors possible then definitely yeah it can also go to uh, completeness but it's very rare that we can provide all the input uh, test vectors because it may take uh, months or years to complete the simulation for the complex designs especially and the next is the static timing analysis can handle the effects of crosstalk and on-chip variations pretty accurately and it, these are extremely important in advanced technology nodes such as 7 nanometer 5 nanometer 3 nanometer and below but the dynamic timing analysis or timing simulation cannot handle the effects of uh, crosstalk and OCV that effectively. And it may take uh, a lot of time to model it properly in, in case of timing simulation. And the static timing analysis is ideal for large designs and complex designs especially. As I told earlier, it's much faster. And dynamic timing analysis is good for small designs that's the reason why we will have the dynamic timing analysis or timing simulation carried out for standard cell designs and we will make lookup tables and this complex design will use the static timing analysis and it uses the data from the uh, timing simulation done on those uh, library cells right there's some more differences Maybe all these are disadvantages of static timing analysis. Static timing analysis cannot check whether all the required flip-flops in the entire design are set to the required values when we hit the asynchronous or synchronous reset. Dynamic timing analysis can simulate uh, these resets. Static timing analysis cannot handle X. When I say X, it can be a value between uh, logic high and logic low, right? Since static timing analysis can understand only logic high and logic low, it cannot uh, propagate X as well. But dynamic timing analysis may can handle X also, depending on the modeling and uh, the simulation tools accuracy. But it may not be a big problem because uh, most of the time we will handle um, only logic high and logic low. Propagation of logic X may not be a big concern in digital design. 
and the static timing analysis cannot ensure that whether the synchronizers are proper in an asynchronous clock domain crossing when i say asynchronous clock domain crossing it is something like we have a design on the left let's say there is a block a and there is a block b and block a operates on one frequency and block b operates on another frequency which is not synchronous with clock a let's say there is a communication between the block a and block b and if there is communication happening then these two blocks should be synchronized because if the communication happens uh, since the clocks are asynchronous with respect to each other it cannot transfer the data properly so there there should be some synchronizer in between so that kind of synchronizer whether it is proper whether it's doing thing properly it cannot ensure that so some other tools can be used for that and the dynamic timing analysis can check those things the static timing analysis cannot ha identify the false paths it is possible that the static timing analysis sometimes flag a path as a violating path but in fact the signal may never flow through that path now this is because static timing analysis identifies all paths equivalently what it does is basically it calculates the uh, delay for all the paths irrespective of whether th it doesn't know whether the signal really flows to this path or not it just calculates the rc delay in the entire path and it just validates okay if this is the worst path i'm going to flag it right but signal may not flow through that path so these cases uh, are specified as constraints in the stc file in order to avoid these cases so uh, false path is one condition and multi-cycle path is another condition there are these are called timing exceptions and the dynamic timing analysis can handle these uh, false paths so these are some differences that i have listed uh, there could be more differences as well but i have listed some of them i hope you got some idea about the difference between the static timing analysis and dynamic timing analysis even though it seems like dynamic timing analysis can more stuff than that of static timing analysis it is literally a very difficult and very slow process and that is the reason why we are going uh, to static timing analysis i'll see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and bye bye